to this episode of Acrinos Access. I'm Eric Matei, uh, joined by a very special guest, Mr. Scott Elena Weaver, sharing with us a bit on what's going on in the world of growing a specialty eye and ear practice. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, on this broadcast of Acrinos Access. Thank you, Eric. It's so nice to be here with you. So, um, so I know we've had a couple of conversations leading up to this and even, even prior to going live here. Um, I know we have a lot of really exciting things to jump into. So, um, so what do you say we, we get right into it? And um, I suppose start by just sharing with us a little bit about your background and how you've come to have this specialty in the world of merging uh, eye and ears and specialty practices. Sure, sure. So I started in, in hearing care 20 years ago. Started at ASU in speech and hearing um, I originally intended to do speech pathology, and then um, as I learned of the technology in hearing care and in hearing aids, I was just drawn to it, and I gravitated to that. And and so um, I started with with a franchise, um, working in a franchise out of out of uh, ASU, and then just by maybe three years in, even two and a half years in, I, I decided to go on my own my own um, pr uh, practice did that for for 17 years so uh, been in the hearing care for a long time really enjoyed helping uh, many hundreds of people and just the, the hearing impaired community is a really special community there's so many people that that they don't know what they're missing uh, unlike vision it's, it's very it's most often it's, it's apparent that there's a need uh, in hearing care, there are a lot of people that have no idea, and so uh, what, what, how it comes to the professional very often is the spouse saying, uh, you know, I, you're you're not listening to me. Sure. <laughs> we need to go see. We need to go see somebody, <laughs> and then they they find their way into a professional. Sure. Um, uh, and this is very often the case is just the the, the loved ones discovering. You know, why is the TV so loud? Why are you not listening? Are you ignoring me? Um, you know, so it's, it's initially it's, it's some it's somewhat marriage counseling, <laughs> relationship counseling. At, at the beginning, it very much is that when when somebody's in denial. Sure. And so it takes working through um, those that denial and working through the, the resistance very often to to you know peel back those layers and get get people to uh, to understand that hearing care, hearing loss is is treatable and there's many benefits to to hearing um, you know hearing at a level that it makes it easy for communication uh, sure. I, I like to make the analogy that you know if 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 uh, when was the last time you saw somebody do smoke signals like build a fire and run this rug over the flames and or even Morse code. When was the last time somebody did that in, in, to you in communication? Nobody does that. The, the, the degree of difficulty in communication of that sort is so tremendous. But yet, while we've started this brief uh, webinar, um, thousands of, of messages, phone calls, have uh, zoomed through our rooms. So the, the technology is, is there and the easier the, the, the communication, the more we'll have it. So when communication gets difficult, we'll have so much less. And, and that's a very sad thing for a lot of hearing impaired sure. because they don't know there's a need and they just know that others are frustrated with them or they, they sometimes discover that, sometimes they don't. But when they when they have such difficulty in communication, they become more reclusive. They start to, to not enjoy the things they once did. They may not go to the show. They may not go to church. They may really draw back on, on their activity and lifestyle, which is 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 very, um, very traumatic for for their social life. And certainly and. Um, 
and actually there's recent studies. The House Institute was the first to, to reveal the correlation between hearing loss and dementia. Wow. Um, there's many studies that you can, you can discover online, um, very notable studies where cognitive decline is related to, to hearing loss. And just in May of this year, there was another study by the Journal of Alzheimer's about the correlation between hearing loss as well as vision impairment. So now there's a correlation between the two of them. Um, that is posted on Ioneer LinkedIn page. You can, you can find that the, the um, um, dual sensory loss is significant in contributing to, to uh, cognitive decline. Sure. And, 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 and that, Scott, I, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like you to share a bit about your background. So, uh, you know, prior to getting into Eye and Ear and what you're doing, I'm looking forward to sharing exactly, exactly what you all do with, with Eye and Ear as well. But, um, but, you know, leading into this, so your background is in audiology, right, and in right. hearing. Okay. Yep. So in all of your years of doing that, when did it kind of start to, when did you kind of start to realize like, wow, a lot of these folks that are coming to me for, for hearing, like they, they clearly have visual need as well. Like what were, you know, what was that aha moment where you were like, you know, th th there's, there's a huge unmet need here with this dual sensory correction need of eye and ear. So I would say it goes back about 15 years ago when, um, when I really, saw the same those those folks that have been coming to me for for years and some a lot of the new folks they they were wearing glasses they had a uh, vision impairment and it just became apparent that 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 we're seeing the same people as the uh, eye care professionals and so i i began reaching out to eye care professionals oh probably six years ago and just um you know, just finding those that were open to the to the um, kind of the marriage or the blending of of this scope of eye care and and uh, hearing care. I found I had I had some success with that uh, in bringing hearing care into an optical practice. Okay. And then. Um, and and this was just this was just kind of like a one off again. You were entrenched in your hearing practice. And then you connect with an optometrist to get into this, op this optometric practice, just as like a one-off, what, an experiment of sorts? Right, right. And, and, and keep in mind, this 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 uh, optical practice was only five miles from my practice. Sure. Okay. I did view them as I did not view them as a threat. I viewed them as a satellite, as an as an as an opportunity to reach more people. Love it. Yes. And, and I and I, that's that's really I think essential for for the eye and eye and ear model is that. Audio, audiology professionals, hearing care professionals, um, they need to see, they, they will see that the community of here of um, vision care is a community that cares about people's communication and vi vision, hearing, this is all, this all builds to the communication that is essential. So to, to view these folks, optical professionals, as I did, is that is that they are partners. They can also um, refer. They can also bring business, and and we can actually both benefit. Our my practice could benefit, but all, so can an optical optical uh, practice. Absolutely. So and 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 a lot of their patients, you know, like I say, they're, they're the same group of people that I seek for my practice. Yes. I'm just yes. seeking. I'm just seeking them now under a different roof. And that that's great because they already have this rapport, this this relationship with with these uh, optical professionals. I, I work with opticians, I work with optometrists, I work with ophthalmologists, and all of them see those those same people that I target. Yes, absolutely. So I, I now have opened my my field of view to so many more people. So it's a win win. The hearing impaired get to, get to be served, and perhaps in areas where they uh, there's there, there's little support for them. Yes. So 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 let's then look at this 
through through the lens of and, and you mentioned a moment ago. So the the studies are available at what at your website ionear.com as far as the the stats. And I know I I thumbed through them and it's it's absolutely fascinating. You know our work here at Acrinos we work with with private practice eye care professionals. We work with a lot of cold starts and it is fascinating to see all the opportunity in a community when you look at a a broader scope of care and the prospect of bringing hearing into an optometry practice is absolutely huge. So, so again, folks, uh, viewers, you can go to eyeandear.com to find those latest, those latest studies. So, so Scott, let's shift gears then. And let's, let's talk about someone who's viewing this and is like, you know what, this is a fascinating idea. And this seems like a specialty that would really suit my vision for my practice. Walk us through a bit of what that looks like as we're talking about identifying the opportunity. And I know we talk about some of the infrastructure, right, equipment, the space needs. Kind of walk us through what someone would, you know, the steps of saying, you know, hey, I I want to take my optometry practice and add this hearing specialty to it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So um, two two partners. one an optometrist and one an ophthalmologist that, ha- that that partnered in this year. Optometrist has a a healthy practice, um, and with this this uh, this practice owner, um, looking for new ways to to develop and and build that that uh, connection with their patients, and have a new source of revenue. So definitely. In, in bringing the, this on with that with this particular owner, she had space, and by the way, this, the space required is a 10 foot by 10 foot room, approximately, give or take. You can go go smaller, even even much smaller when when it comes to to hearing care. It can be just a portion of an existing room. You don't have to change, you know, you don't have to take equipment out of a room. So if you have a lane that is already built with everything that you want in it, then leave it as is. Have a a corner and a wall that's available for for shelf and some accessories and displays. Have a a small space for a small table and then bring in hearing care as simple as, as, as an iPad that we provide that is a screener. And this iPad can be um, the 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 hearing screener can be uh, self-administered. So you know it could be as little impact on your existing practice as you like. Now that's the optometrist taking on on hearing care and audiology for her practice, which has worked wonderfully. It's it's at the pace sh- she wants, and it's 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 not changing the the room and the the existing business at all. It's just adding new service, new scope for her practice. So equipment wise, I mean, you don't need like, I don't know what, what, Scott, when I think of hearing, I think of like, like a sound booth and we're talking like a major renovation to the space. So you're telling me that someone can add hearing to their practice with an iPad. There's got, there's gotta be more to it than that. Well, yes, or, but that's screening, right? So, okay, sure. So, okay, okay. And, so, and that is the, providing a screening for each and every person that comes in for for an eye exam is simple, and we we make sure that it's all all the displays and all the all the material is there, and so, so people will ask for it. But you too, as a, as an owner, can can ask for it. You know, they come in for a, for an eye exam, and you simply say, oh, and and due to recent research. Um, showing the correlation between vision loss, hearing loss, and cognitive impairment, we are now providing a, a complementary hearing, hearing, screen. exam, uh, hearing sure. screening with your eye exam. Or you can say, we'd like to charge a fee for this hearing screening. So it's, it just depends. Now, for this particular optometrist, it works well just to have the screening there, and she sorts out the patients, and, and when there's a, um, a need uh, she'll refer to an audiology partner, and that partner will come in and do the testing with equipment that is using insert earphones that that has the same effect as a soundproof booth. Okay. Yeah. So so that technology big, <laughs> that bulky refrigerator size uh, or freezer size sound booth is completely obsolete. 
Okay. Half, half of all audiology practices in the country do not use that any longer. Okay. The modern ones, especially, are using just insert earphones because that sure. gives them more space and it just is, it's, it's just a, a nicer uh, um, feel in the, in, the, in the room. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's scary for somebody. A lot, some people, I can't tell you the number of times, back in the day when I had a big soundproof booth and I asked folks, can you enter my soundproof booth? And some of them would, would say, I don't like this. You can't close the door. Right. So we're not asking them to get into a scary room, a scary booth, and close the door on them. When when some folks are claustrophobic, some folks, you know, just they, they're 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 not able to get up into it anyway, due to due to their 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 handicapped needs. And so, you know, we, we make it as as uh, simple and and effective as possible. So screening by an optometrist, that's one I guess um, view of of this in an optical practice. Now, looking at the ophthalmology practice that also came on this year, now we're talking about um, a practice that sees 30 or more people a day in their in their vision center. So, and and there's multiple locations with this ophthalmologist. So the 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 difference here is that this owner has a small room available. There's a lot of redundancy. And that redundancy can be sacrificed a little bit for a space just exclusive for audiology. That's another way of doing it. Both are good. Both work. There's no, there's no, not one is better than the other. It's just both work. So, um, with this, with this owner, you know, we we do have them still screened in the in the lanes. So when they're getting a high eye exam, they're going to get screened for a hearing exam as well. They're screened. We, we, we have some indication as, as to whether they should be seeing a, an audiology professional, a partner, or if they're good as they are, or if they can be fit with, with uh, a device that is, doesn't, isn't prescriptive. So, so there are different devices, by the way. Just like there so, are. So, okay. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, what, what's being done in, the opto in this optometry practice, this ophthalmology practice, these case studies you're sharing, right? Um, well, all that's being done is the screening. And then based on the screening, it's either a full need to get to an audio professional, right? But then there's also what kind of the, 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 this middle ground of a need where there could be a non-prescriptive hearing that's aid? That's correct. That's correct. As, okay. as with glasses, there are readers. We call those, we call those in hearing care, we call those PSAPs. Okay. PSAPs, they, they are a... They over the counter, they don't share the, the, the name of, of hearing aid. They, they don't, they, by, by FDA approval, they have no rights to the name hearing aid, although they function much like a hearing aid and they are off the shelf and they are ordered online and, and, and they really, they are not that good, <laughs> but they serve a need um, for those that have basic need uh, and maybe extremely low budget. So we, those are the readers. Sure. And then and then the new category of, of hearing aids um, over the counter OTC, um, which I and ear is a wholesale provider of OTC hearing aids. These instruments are a much higher quality. Many of the same features of the very best of prescriptive devices. These are in a category to be fit from thousand dollars or eight hundred dollars even if you want to go that low and they can go up to fifteen hundred dollars for a set for a pair with with fifty percent margin or more depending on where where that where they're sold on on uh, on your retail side sure sure so even a hundred percent margin fifty percent the low side so you can go hundred percent margin on those it just depends on what technologies you're offering so they, they vary just like with glasses there are different quality levels absolutely absolutely and it's also scott look it's, it's like any facet of an eye care practice what makes what makes every practice very unique is is each doctor's unique scope of care and their vision yeah. for the practice so so it's fascinating to hear and um i'm, le I'm learning a ton i i was not aware the, of, of this whole world it's it's a fascinating <laughs> it's a it's fascinating stuff okay so as we're talking about then um Incorporated into the practice, 
right? Um, what about like standard operating procedures? Okay. Uh, because like, I mean, you don't just do it. I mean, there are some things that are going to need to be changed regarding like triage, patient communication, stuff like that. Walk us through a bit of kind of the expectations there, or, or at least what a practice would have to do to position themselves to be yeah. successful with it. Great question. So, so we have, we have training. Uh, it's, a, it's about a two hour training on, on working with the hearing care, uh, the hearing impaired and working with their devices, servicing them. So definitely there, there are, um, there are protocols in place and they're FDA regulated um, for prescriptive devices. And the new category, they're not FDA regulated. Well, they are, but they're under different different protocols. And um, and then PSAPs are virtually under zero protocols. Sure. Um, and so, as as a professional in in, in doing our, our due diligence and doing pro proper proper ethical care, we do the standard, the high standard, which is we're gonna we're gonna consult with the patient. We're gonna discover the need. We're going to ask them um, FDA questions. FDA questions are questions, list of 10 questions that, that basically help us to, to see if this patient is going to be, need a referral out to an e, um, ENT, ear, nose, and throat physician, otolaryngologist. And so this helps us to, to do our due diligence with the patient. It's, it's, um, it's, it's just hearing health care and, and discovering the need and, and finding out what the patient, where the patient's at. And then we, we inspect the ear canals for cerumen. We have wax removal um, options available for, for each patient if there is wax. And most often there's not. Most often for, for folks that would come into an optical practice, you're still going to look in the ears because that's, that's due diligence, that's, that's proper ethical care is you don't fit a hearing aids for a hearing aid when when it's just wax that's causing the, the hearing loss. Sure. So we, we of course always look in the ear and there are there are protocols for even looking in ears. The proper way is is not just look in the ear and then look in this there's there's technique and there's just like with with eye care. There's technique there's, there's there's reasons why things are done to a, a certain degree and a certain standard. So we, we share with you all those details and, and how this needs to be done properly for autoscopy. Then um, it's, it's running a hearing screening or a hearing exam, a full hearing test, audiometric t evaluation. Again, this is, uh, this is their standards with that. And, and with the screening, it's, very, it's not to the standard, of course, with, with, uh, as with the audiometric exam. But a hearing screening can be performed self-administered like I said, it can be performed with with a staff member, not necessarily an opt uh, optometrist or or you know somebody who who's owning this practice is busy with so many other things. So, so a, te a technician, this is something that that a, a technician could be could be coached and trained to doing and doing proficiently. Absolutely, hundred percent. Yes, fabulous, yes. awesome. So hearing screens performed. That helps to to know where the need is, and if 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 an audiology partner is 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 going to come into the picture, or if um, there's loss and a a lesser technology can be applied to this need. So there's a up to a moderate loss is one category of hearing aids, and then there's another category beyond moderate. Then this is the prescriptive, uh, more high end hearing aids of major major manufacturers such as Phonak, Starkey. Widex, Signia, Oticon, these are the big companies in, in hearing care. Um, they, one of these devices will be prescribed by the audiology partner and, and we leave that at, to their discretion. We want them to, to, to run with their scope of practice as they see fit. And uh, so that's, that's basically in a nutshell what we're looking at with the variation and how this can, can run. In, in sure. Practice. So, so, so I guess if we take it from the top, we come to realize that there's this huge correlation between the need for vision and hearing, right? So, so right now, as it is, I mean, for, for, for our audience out there, you know, optometrists, you're seeing 3,000 patients a year. There's a good chance, there's a pretty good chunk of those folks that need hearing. Yeah. So we start with that need, okay? And then we realize, wow, we can provide screenings to identify that need here here in office. 
Okay. And it sounds to me like the screening process is pretty simple, right? Pretty yes. straightforward stuff. Again, not much space. It's like under an iPad. 20 under 20 minutes. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, from there, then identifying what, if any, level of need is, level of severity. Um, and then from there, it's a matter of fitting them in office versus versus sending them out. And that, that's something that I'm kind of that I'm kind of wondering, what does that look like when you do have someone who has a sufficient enough need that the I know you said what's it called? A, 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 a PSAP? What was the Oh PSAP P, uh, PSAP is, is a personal PSAP. Sound amplifier. Sure. Okay. So if you have someone that has a need greater than a PSAP, but not quite that level of I need to go see the audiologist for a full fitting. Um, so that would be then be, so for, for, for the, for this middle section of patients, I guess this middle 60% of patients that could be fit with a device in office, is this something that would be done in an optometric practice? It these sure can. Be with these? It can really? absolutely be done. Yes. And it can be wow. done. And it can be done same day. So, okay. so you know, the, the, the we're talking, somebody comes in, we go through the protocols for, for a good screening, and we then know that they are in a category where a, a device can be fit. Um, this can be fit same day with, with um, the technology we provide. It's going to, you're going to input your results, and then the, the instruments are programmed. And we're talking with, within minutes, they're programmed and fully set for the patient. They're placed on the ears. They're placed on the ears. You're just, you're just checking for the fit. You're, gotcha. you're, you're making sure that the, the, the patient's comfortable with the fit. You make sure they're comfortable with how, how to handle them. It's it's really, it adds maybe another, it can be as little as 10, but it's probably add another 20 minutes if you're really taking your time with them. So sure. we're talking 30 to 40 minutes to be to have a completed um, transaction in, here, in audiology or in hearing care with that category of instrument. Sure. Now, and then there's also the involving a, a, an audiology partner. In this, in this case, the screening is performed. Audiology partner then comes in and does a, an extensive exam, again, with insert earphones. And, and the audiology partner then does the full programming of hearing aids, uh, fitting, and, and the same thing, but to a much more detailed level. And the satisfaction is going to be increased with the audiology partner versus a, a, a um, OTC or a PSAP. That, that's just certainly it is. I mean, if you, if you relate that to, to glasses, there's that relation and quality. Absolutely. Yes. To, to, <laughs> to convenience and and um, and expense, right? Like if you want the low. Don't cost. get me started on that. Don't okay. get me or our audience started on that, Scott. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, like so many things. So that, wow, this is, this is remarkable stuff. So, um, okay. So, so now, so you've, you've kind of shared a bit about this process, right? How you can incorporate a huge need B it seems to be seamlessly incorporated into the practice. Um, however, there are, there is some marketing aspects and patient communication aspect, little changes to some standard operating procedures, uh, based on the outcome of the screening, the recommendation to the patient, um, hey, you need to meet with, we're referring you to the audiologist, or hey, we have a great solution here that can take care of you, what have you. Um, seems like seems like remarkable stuff. Also seems like a fair amount of work. Still, stuff needs to be done. Um, so I, I suppose to kind of pull it all together, Scott, why don't, why don't you share with us, you know, specifically – what you guys are doing at, at Eye and Ear, because it's my understanding that what you guys have done is basically make everything that you've, this this big masterpiece that you've painted for us yeah. and made it a simple turnkey solution. So share a little bit about exactly what that would look like. In other words, if a member of our, our, our viewing audience right now is like, you know what, this is for me, walk us through what that process looks like. Okay. So we're talking about, you're, you're asking, what will, what will it look like if somebody goes to ioneer.com and go, clicks on register and they, they, they fill out the form, they're going to be contacted. We're going to reach out to them. We're going to inquire what, where their practice is and what details they have about their practice. What, what degree do they want to be involved in this? Do they want an audiology partner uh, connected to their practice? 
Do they want somebody who's going to come into their practice and do testing on their patients? So that's coming in. That's not sending them out. That, that no, would be... no, no, no. Okay. We, 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 uh, we want the audiology partner to come in. We, we do not want the referral sent out. We want everything in-house to the optical practice. It's all fully accessible. Like, there's, Love it. Love yeah, it. There's, yes. there's not a need for them to go out. They can all, they can all be, it can all be handled. And, and as, as, a, as a practice owner of, in, in audiology, I want locations. Absolutely. But, but that's, that costs. There's yep. costs there. But if I, can have, if I can have half a dozen locations in my area that are, that are within 10 miles, and I can go visit these locations, that's really good. That's good business. I've got I've got doctors and staff at six locations that are referring to my name to me. It doesn't get better. It's a win-win. Absolutely. On, on the other side, the optical practice is getting the sale. The sale takes place with the optical practice under a licensed professional for the state through that state. Now that's that is. The, that is so huge. And, and, yeah, and I'll tell you why it's so huge, Scott, also, is because it's so much more than just a sale. Like, I, I, I and and I know, I, I'm sure you, like many members of, of the, the audience, we've all seen the, the videos, like, on social media of the kids that put the glasses on for the first time or the yeah. kids that can that get the hearing, the hearing aids for the first time. And, you know, there's tear jerkers that are just so amazing. So, right. so what right. someone is doing in their practice is, is – it's huge. I mean, it's a huge enhancement of quality of life. This this is what took place today, for, for, for example. Today, uh, a, a, I was working in an office lo lo located nearby me in optical practice owned by an ophthalmologist. I made a sale for this patient. I made a fitting for this patient. Not, not necessarily a fitting yet. I did make a sale and the, the, the instruments are ordered for that patient. Um, they had a specific need that I, that was, it required an order, but this person was new to this opt, uh, optical practice. And guess what? They've never stepped in this, in this practice before. They said, and you do eyes too. Can I, I want my eyes, I want an ex eye exam. And do you have a doctor like that's going to do that? Yeah, we have, we have a uh, ophthalmologist. We have uh, optometrists. Who do you want to see? I mean, we can do this. So they now have a, an appointment for for eye care. They came in for hearing care. Oh, so they were scheduled with you. They had they had not gone through the, the 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 eye side to get to you. They scheduled direct with you, and then it's like a it's basically a referral in the other way, right? It's a referral in the other way. We give cool. leads. We give leads. We generate. So you will have new patients that you never had before through hearing care and you'll have them turn to eye care and then those that are in eye care that you're that are your eye care patients guess what they have another reason to stick with you and the eye center that's across the street or down the road that is not on board with eye and ear they are just they are they are without the competitive competitive edge that you have as an eye and ear practice you have a competitive edge look at how successful it is for big box retailers go into a costco do you see it being a success i do the the the, the costco's nearby in my city i've seen them add new new business like they're they're because it's a warehouse they do require booths which they should but the, i've seen them add go from one booth to three booths Wow, and and their and their optical center is nonstop busy. You can have a competitive edge. You need to do it together. It's really, Absolutely. it's really something when you do it together. Okay, so so you guys, so so someone connects with you. Is, hey, I wanna I wanna incorporate this into my 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 optometry practice. And so the first thing is kind of a fact finding. Like you want to understand them and really ultimately kind of like what level do they want to be involved. Right. That's what the first level? thing I'm hearing. OK, exactly. I, I had a, I had a conversation with a gentleman this morning, an ophthalmologist in the in the state of Arizona. He asked the question. 
do can I can I run this all fully on my own without any outside professionals? I said, sure, absolutely. You take the level of involvement you want. And we'll guide them exactly how to do that. We'll get them to all fully set up all their marketing, you know, all the displays, everything that's going to draw the, the question. Hey, can I get my hearing tested? Yeah, that's the question we want everybody who walks in to ask um, at that practice. And you can ask for it. So again, somebody comes in for an eye exam, you can say, okay, and now we're going to get your hearing screened. It just adds 10 minutes. It's self-administered. It really draws nothing out of your staff. <laughs> it's 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 simple. Sure, sure. And I and I think and I think when you when you look at the numbers and again that that study. Who, who's behind that study, by the way? That study, the, said, the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. Okay, sure. Yeah. Well, and then, and, well, then you said there was a study linking hearing and eyes. Oh, the how? Oh, that's the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease that came out oh, in May wow. this okay. year. Sure. That's okay. that's that's the Journal of Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's Disease. The House Institute, uh, or sorry, John Hopkins um, House Institute. Yes, um, they they originally came up with the 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 study that was was like groundbreaking. Um, it really. Like every audiology practice had a big poster and, and all this information about dementia or Alzheimer's and, and, and hearing loss and the risks. And, and it was a big marketing effort, but also it made a difference for the, for these, these folks, because when, when you, when we take a vibrant mind and, you know, a POW, for example, POW goes into confinement, their, their vibrant mind in their early twenties, when they come out five years later or 10 years later, it's nothing like it once was, and that's due to the stimulation that they lack. We are, if we don't look at our, our, our senior population that are visiting, visiting you in your practice, if we don't look at them and say, I understand you are in an unwelcome, unwanted confinement. I understand that your, your, your loss of hearing is confining you in a world that is very muted, that people don't want to, people find it too difficult to talk to you. So they, so this person becomes reclusive. They don't go to church. They don't do the things they once once did. If we don't look at those people and say, "Hey, I've got a solution for you. I've got connections. We're going to bring about a new level of awareness for you, at the very least, and we're going to help you as as an alternative. We can we can fully help you, not just aware. You know, like it's what awesome. are we? What are we, that's 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 a standard that can be in every optical practice every eye, every eye center can be an ear center you show you show me one that that, that this is not capable of that and i'll tell you how it is capable of that it's right everyone's yes capable. it's amazing it, it, it's it's amazing scott so so i suppose so i suppose to kind of pull it all together i mean like like well for starters i'll say this um as a matter of fact, we had a we had a, a call from uh, an Acredos client earlier today who was unable to attend. Who's like Eric? Like, yes, this is so awesome, super stoked. So, so I'm excited to see kind of what type of results this can deliver for a practice. Um, and likewise, when we're talking, you know, we work with a lot of cold starts. It's actually one of our specialties here. When we're talking about ways to make noise, differentiate your practice, and get patients in the door, this is such a unique way to do it. That yes. that that doesn't cost that doesn't cost no. anything to no. the practice, right? We'll, we'll so, have, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh well, no. I, what were you going to say? We'll we'll have we'll have your optical practice with an outreach program for two hundred and fifty dollars. You're onboarding. Go to ionear.com, register, go to onboarding. You'll see the onboarding is there at two hundred and fifty dollars. Onboard means that you're going to get everything that's going to be presentable. Your presentation has started. Sure. The presentation to your everybody who walks in your door, the presentation has has begun. That's what onboarding is. It can be a professional onboarding where you're going to have an audiology professional show up to your location and run a, a grand opening event, or it can be just you're getting the the displays and you're you're gonna you're gonna start the the message. You're gonna start sending the message. Test it out. Two hundred fifty dollars. I mean, you spent that on on what? You spent that on a, a, a night out once. <laughs> so so this can change your this can change your practice. This can completely change your practice. And let's talk about the patient. It changes lives. So absolutely. If we don't do that, if we don't think of that investment as, as, as a way to provide for the needs of our of our, our patients that we love, 
then we, 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 we've not served them proper, fully to the extent that we can. Because, like, again, every eye center can be an ear center too. Yes. Wow. Scott, uh, this, is, this has been absolutely fascinating. This has been absolutely fascinating. So, um, for, so for those interested, wanting to learn more, uh, they can visit what? Ionear.com. Ionear.com. Right? Yeah. Which, uh, which I'm still blown away that you have that domain. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Ionear.com. That's got to be like a million dollar domain name. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, well, th th this is fascinating stuff, man. So um, for all of our viewers out there looking to add novel specialties to their practice, um, adding hearing just is absolutely remarkable opportunity out there. And what uh, Scott Linnewaver is doing with Ionear, huge, huge turnkey solution to add that specialty to your practice. So um, Scott, thank you so much for joining us on Thank this you, uh, episode of Acrinos Access. And on behalf of our entire team here at Acrinos, I'm Eric Matei signing off. I'm wishing everybody an awesome week. And until next time. Happy 4th. Happy 4th of July. Thank you.